Hello everyone, today is December the 10th, 2017, continually praying and receiving from the Lord. And whatever I receive, I just put it out, may that be short or just a thought. But it's so important that we are able to place the events of the word, the happenings in the spirit, and the expectancies and the prophecies into the right perspective. So that's what I'm trying to do. Today's message is about the paradigm shift that is coming up on the earth. Paradigm shift means total change. And that is because the kingdom of God is at hand. So the kingdom is coming and the world system is tearing down. So everything is changing. Nothing will ever be the same. Now, Jesus came 2,000 years ago to reveal the Father. Few have received him or the kingdom. Ever since, there is a great spiritual warfare between good and evil on the earth and in the heavenlies. And this is now coming to culmination in the tribulation because now comes the Antichrist system will show its fullness and over that will come the victory of the kingdom and then the Lord is coming back with victory to take his seat as a king and as the Lord of the earth when the Antichrist system is brought to judgment and the false prophet and the beast. The victory of the kingdom is the victory of love and justice over evil and corruption, hatred and war, but we are far from that yet. The sequence of events are the day of the Lord comes, then comes the rapture of the first fruits. In this rapture of the first fruits of Jesus Christ, we are going to be changed, our bodies are going to be changed, we are entering eternity, and this is what those who are keeping their eyes on Jesus are waiting for, the coming of the Lord. And those who are remaining for the trial and tribulation, they will go through a very hard time to come back to Jesus. Because of so many things are transpiring, there are many different opinions. I see many videos contradicting one another. I heard a minister saying that we are going to have 10 years window time to bring in the harvest. Well, the scriptures has three and a half years and we have seen so much delays already concerning the coming of the kingdom, which was planned for 2012 for this paradigm shift, that it's very possible that not everything is going to be exactly as it is written because things are changing, energies are changing, repentance is taking place. So we have to be flexible to be open to what God is revealing to us because he will reveal everything and it doesn't matter to us really what shape or form it's coming. It is matter to us that we are under his protection that we are receiving from him what he has for us, and that we are walking out our destinies. And yes, many of the saints will leave this earth because we are transferring into the eternal kingdom. That's a higher dimension. They become spirit beings. That's what it means they leave this earth. They don't actually leave, they go into another dimension. It is a parallel reality world, which is non-existent to those who are not believing. And for those of us who are believing, we were just wishing for being in the kingdom. We have been caught up in the spirit at times, and then we had visitation, and we could go into the spirit in prayer and see visions and hear the Lord speaking, and it was for us a reality. Now it will become our habitation. We are going to abide in that. The redeemed will remain in that. Now we are entering the kingdom. That is a real paradigm shift. Everything changes. Everything. But everything will change even for those who remain. For worse and not for better. So that will be their motivation to come out of the world, which they did not want to leave until they had the opportunity and we were preaching to them. They plugged up their ears not to hear it. See, those who left behind are because they were absolutely resisting the message of the kingdom resisting the message of Jesus Christ or his existence or surrendering or to give up on the word, they just resisted that. In other words, they haven't heard the message. They refuse to hear it. They refuse to even have a thought or a reasoning about it because I guarantee that if somebody reads the Bible, will get saved. There is no way around it. You will not be able to escape salvation if you're just willing to hear the message because the Spirit of the Lord will come upon you and give you that divine revelation that it takes to receive the message which is for other people. The scripture says foolishness. Now it will not be foolishness anymore because they will see the manifestation of the kingdom and flock into the kingdom and they will see the manifestation of evil which they also didn't believe in. 
because they were just part of it and blinded to it. So paradigm shift is for the whole world. It cannot be that one part of the world becoming better while the other is not becoming worse. Until there is still evil in the world. It is a force and anti-force. Christ and anti-Christ. These are the days we're living and it's so important to understand this separation. I keep talking about the separation of the realm. And this is now taking place. The Lord is totally ripping out the people of God from one sphere into another and leave behind those who belong to the old system, the old paradigm. So the left behind population will have to go through the Great Tribulation and they will be subjected to the Antichrist system, which they are called to resist even with their lives, even with laying down their lives. And so this fire will cause the people of God to rise up in faith, return to the Lord, and choose death over temporal life, then to choose temporal life and eternal death. Hebrews 12, 11 says, When we are punished, it seems to us at the time something to make us sad, not glad. Later, however, those who have been disciplined by such punishment reap the peaceful reward of the righteous life. So this is going to be their way of returning. So now came the most critical time to understand not to receive the mark of the beast, not to go for government support, put our trust in the Lord, live on faith, know that he will provide, or even if we have to die, we still choose him as opposed to Becoming part of the Antichrist system can't do that. So I don't know how I have to say this. We keep saying this for many years. Those who are messengers of the coming tribulation. Do not pick up the mark of the beast. Please do not pick up the mark of the beast. That's the RFID chip to buy and sell. Please do not pick up the mark of the beast. Do not go into the FEMA camp voluntarily for food because they will immediately mark you and chip you. And this is really going to be a very trialing time for everyone. Lord, help us. Lord, help us. Lord, help us. And Lord, help people to understand this. And Lord, I ask that everyone would now spread the news of this, that they would believe and they would take this to heart. Because so far, you know, when I talk to people and tell them to be prayed, they don't believe it. Nobody believes it until it strikes and they will be there without supply and line up at the FEMA camps. So, all right, Lord, help me, Jesus. I will not go into more details in this message. The message really is the paradigm shift. The paradigm shift is coming. That is the shift of all things. Everything that we know is will be teared down, and everything that is of kingdom is coming forth. But this transition is not an easy transition. It's not a turning on the switch. There were a lot of preparation, a lot of call going out saying that come to me now, keep your eye on me and I will redeem you. So if you hear this message, please hear me. Be the one who is redeemable, be the one who is keeping the eye on Jesus, who is waiting for his coming, who is understanding and enduring until the very day he is coming. Because again, when is he coming? We don't know exactly when he is coming. So just be prepared for what is coming. And most importantly, draw near to God and put Him first, and He is the only one now to talk to. And that's it. And the rest He will take care of. We put our trust in Him and our hope in Him. I'm going to read a few scriptures in closing. 2 Timothy 2, 19. But the solid foundation that God has laid cannot be shaken. And on it are written these words, The Lord knows those who are His. And those who say that they belong to the Lord must turn away from wrongdoing. James chapter 4, only parts of it. Unfaithful people, don't you know that to be the world's friend means to be God's enemy? If you want to be the world's friend, you make yourself God's enemy. God resists the proud but gives grace to the humble. Submit yourself to God. Resist the devil and he will run away from you. Come near to God and he will come near to you. Wash your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts, you hypocrites. Be sorrowful, cry and weep. Change your laughter into crying, your joy into gloom. 
Humble yourselves before the Lord, and He will lift you up. God is the only lawgiver and judge. He alone can save and destroy. Who do you think you are to judge someone else? Now listen to me. You that say, Today or tomorrow we will travel to a certain city where we will stay a year and go into business and make a lot of money. You don't even know what your life tomorrow will be. You are like the puff of smoke, which appears for a moment and then disappears. But you should say is this, if the Lord is willing, we will live and do this or that. But now you are proud and you boast, and such boasting is wrong. So then, if we do not do the good we know we should do, we are guilty of sin. 1 Peter 5.10 But after you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace, who calls you to share his eternal glory in union with Christ, will himself perfect you and give you firmness, strength, and a sure foundation. Philippians 3.21 He will change your weak moral bodies and make them like his own glorious body using that power by which he is able to bring all things under his rule. James 1.12 Happy are those who remain faithful under trial, because when they succeed in passing such a test, they will receive as the reward a life which God has promised to those who love him, the crown of life. Revelation 2.10 Fear none of those things which are to sh- which you shall suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, then you may be tried, and you shall have tribulation ten days. Be you faithful unto death, and I will give you the crown of life. And of course there are many more. Be blessed and Talk to you soon. God bless you.